Ever feel like it's a constant struggle to get good at Rocket League? Don't worry, you're not alone in thinking that. Rocket League is a tough game, from the bottom of the ranks through to the top. Hey, I'm Jack, your friendly neighborhood Rocket League player known for having no clue what I'm doing. Well, at least according to my teammates, of course. In today's video, I'm going to share my own personal guide to improving at Rocket League and the steps I took to get to Grand Champion 1. Here are the sections of today's video if you want to flick back and forth between them. Let's get into it. In this first section of the video, I'm going to go through what I believe are the fundamentals to improving at Rocket League. And I believe there are five fundamentals to improving at this game. They are car control, ball control, game awareness, boost management, and finally, letting yourself fail. I'll dig a little deeper into each of these now, starting off with car control. Car control is paramount in Rocket League. As a physics-based game, Rocket League is quite unique in that there aren't many transferable skills. Yeah, you may have played a fair few racing games in your life, however, Rocket League is very niche in its own regard. And without decent car control, you're going to have a hard time in this game. It's not a surprise that many players spend hours upon hours improving their car control. Many players will spend hours in free play, in workshop maps if they're on PC, and even custom training packs to improve their car control. And that's one of the exciting things about Rocket League. No matter how many hours you put into this game, you can always improve on it. Having decent car control is vital to executing various mechanics in this game, from basic dribbles, to air dribbles, to even knowing how to demo your opponents correctly. This all comes down to having car control, and it's no surprise to me when I see lower ranked players working on quite complex mechanics like flip resets, when in reality you really need to be focusing on the core car control basics. That includes knowing how to flip your car correctly, knowing how to hit a power shot correctly, and even just developing a sense of aerial control. The next fundamental we have here is ball control. If you've watched my content before, you'll know I'm a firm believer that the player with the ball has control of the game. It's also why it's no surprise that I put ball control as second on my list here. With a decent level of ball control, you are allowed to dictate what happens next in the game. That may be keeping possession of the ball to draw your opponents in closer away from that goal, knowing when to time your flicks correctly, or even something as simple as catching the ball when your opponents decide to boom it down the field. There are so many situations in Rocket League where ball control is paramount. An example I like to use is when a player decides to pass the ball across their own net. Many times, players don't have the level of ball control needed to execute this correctly, usually resulting in their opponents capitalizing and scoring on them. When a player with a decent level of ball control will know to keep the ball close to them before executing a shot across their own net, or even know that opponents are pressuring too much for them to pass across their own goal, opting for a safer option in moving the ball to that corner. As you start to climb the ranks in Rocket League, possession becomes increasingly important. Ball control is a must at this level, and oftentimes it's the only way you will be able to score against your opponents. Whether that's a power slide cut to get past your opponent, an air dribble over their heads, and so on. The next fundamental I have here is game awareness. And while this isn't an in-game mechanic, you'll develop game awareness as you progress through the game and play it more. Game awareness encompasses a variety of different things. That includes knowing when to pressure your opponents, knowing the correct time to take a shot, identifying when you can be a part of a play, whether that's a teammate passing it off to you, or if you may be going to collect your back corner boost when there's an opportunity to score on your opponents. One method that I used to further enhance my game awareness was playing 1v1s. In this game mode, I had to rely on my and there were many times where my lack of game awareness was exploited. As much as it sucks to play 1v1s, I know it's an important component to improving my game awareness. I know that many Rocket League YouTubers and many of the Rocket League community will say play the game more to improve your game awareness and I have to admit that this is true advice. Rocket League isn't a game that you can just pick up all of a sudden and there are many niche situations in this game requiring that game awareness to kick in to work out what the best option going forward is. I'll be the first one to admit that I know for a fact I am way too aggressive sometimes in the game. So my opponents always capitalize on that weakness of mine. The next fundamental I have here is boost management. I'll admit, this is probably a fundamental that I still need to work on to this day. I'm very much a lead foot and can drain my boost very quickly. But boost management also allows you to remain in the play, to make that save when you need to, and even to capitalize on that play once you receive possession. I can't even count the amount of times that I've gone to collect one of my back corner boosts, when in reality, I should have been collecting the pads to stay relevant in a play. Even when going for saves across my own net, I find that sometimes I'll use way too much boost and completely miss the ball, when if I feathered the boost I would have actually made contact with it. I also believe that boost management is a fundamental that separates the good players from the great players. One early change that I made when first starting out in Rocket League was changing my boost button. Nowadays I have my boost button on R1 and find that it helps me with jumping and boosting at the same time. I spent a good portion of my first few hundred hours in this game learning how to feather my boost correctly. The last fundamental I have here is letting yourself fail. Now I'll use a concrete example of my own personal experience 
experience playing this game. I remember the first time that I hit champion one and thought that I wouldn't have a chance to even climb to grand champion. This was also back before Rocket League went free to play where grand champion was actually the highest rank. However, as I built the courage, I went on my journey towards grand champion one and along the way failed many times, beaten by an array of players who were much better than I was. However, it was from failing in these situations that allowed me to work on my own gameplay and what I needed to improve on to actually beat these opponents. And while not many players enjoy this, spent quite a lot of time analyzing my own replays play by play. I also analyzed these replays from my opponent's point of view to see how they were capitalizing on me. So if you've never analyzed your own replays, or maybe it's been quite a while since you have analyzed one, I definitely recommend taking out some time to look at them. In this section, I'm gonna go through a framework that I believe can help you improve at these fundamentals I've just spoken about. The first is to set your goals. You're not going to improve at Rocket League if you don't set any goals for yourself. Maybe it's dedicating some time to work on one aspect of your gameplay that needs improvement. Say, you may dedicate 10 minutes of your warm-up each day to practicing your bounce dribbles. Also, be sure to make your goals attainable. You're not suddenly going to rise from Platinum 1 to Grand Champion 1 in a day. Put some little steps in place to work out how you're going to get from Platinum to Grand Champion 1. The next is to commit to continuous learning and improvement in this game. If you know the names like Garrett G, Squishy, Torment and Torsos, you'll know that they've been competing at the highest level of Rocket League for quite some time now. And they've stayed at this top level due to learning, adapting and improving their gameplays to match the meta that we see today. We didn't see many flip resets in gameplay back in 2016 and it's the exact same for us players too. You need to commit yourself to continuously improving and learning about this game. Maybe every two weeks you'll take some time out to watch a replay of your own to work out what aspects of your gameplay you need to be training or even going through a few replays to work out what the meta is at the moment. I know here in OCE, players can be quite aggressive at times, so I usually try my best to slow down the game where I can. Next up in the framework is consistency is key. A big personal downfall of my own is that I play Rocket League maybe once or twice a week, and as a result, my gameplay can be quite inconsistent. If you want to improve at this game, you need to consistently dedicate the time to improving at it. In an ideal world, I'd love to play Rocket League for 90 minutes a day, no more or no less. Why? I find that 90 minutes is the optimal time for me to play a Rocket League session. Any time after that and I'll be completely inconsistent with my mechanics. And any less would see me not warm up enough to reach my optimal performance levels. And again, this is different for every player. I mean, you see the pros grinding hours upon hours each day to this game. So find what suits you. Next is to know your strengths. All players have different strengths and weaknesses in this game. So it's about honing in on the strengths that you have as a player. Maybe you're quite a fast player so you can outpace your opponents. Or quite mechanical so you can pull off those flip resets to get past them to score a goal. Spend some time working out what kind of player you are and dedicate a majority of your time to improving at your strengths. Don't forget about your weaknesses too. That other bit of time should be dedicated towards improving on those weaknesses. And last on the list is that good things take time. With thousands of hours in this game, I still have so much to improve on in this game and I know that I need to consistently put in the time to actually seeing myself improve. Rocket League is a game definitely not for the faint-hearted. It's a long-term journey that you need to commit to as a player if you're wanting to play at the higher levels. I myself have witnessed worlds of improvement from when I first picked up this game in 2016, never thinking that I'd hit grand champion in my life. So it's about understanding that these little steps you are taking to improve at this game will pay dividends in the future. And heck, you may surpass me in ranks as well. In this final part of the video, I'm gonna go through my own box of goodies that I've used to improve at Rocket League over these years. I'll go through the training packs that I've used, free play drills, and workshop maps that have helped me level up my game. Sorry for any of you console players watching. Now, let's get into it. So now I'll go through some of the training packs that I've used ever since the custom training feature was released. First up is Kev Pert's aerial car control, and I found this really helped me with improving my aerial car control, especially making those fine adjustments with my car. Wall to air dribble by IP Joker, again, was really helpful for my air dribbles and practicing those. Ground shots by Paquito was a great pack to improve my power shots. Redirects V1 was beneficial to improving my car control whilst in the air, as well as working on my accuracy with my redirects into the goal. One of my favorite packs here is the ultimate warmup by Hanata and again use this training pack more as a double touch trainer and as a result both my mechanics and my double touch improved immensely. I remember using this speed flip kickoff practice for quite some time when I didn't even know how to speed flip in the first place and as a result with this pack alone learned how to speed flip correctly. Using the defensive backboard reads pack here was really beneficial in learning how to position my car after jumping off the backboard whether that was to save a goal or even clear the ball. Backboard clears was a great pack to learn the timing of the bounce off my backboard to get those 
clears down the field. A very useful mechanic for relieving pressure off your team. Uncomfortable saves was really helpful in learning how to judge the ball going over my calf and getting used to the change in the camera angle as well. Devo by Torsos again was one of those pioneer packs that I used to start learning my double taps. I used basic dribbling skills for a couple reasons. One, to learn the hitbox of the octane and the second was to get the hang of dribbling the ball on top of my car ready for a flick. Aerial off wall was used as a pack to learn the positioning of my car when jumping off the wall, either ready to position myself for an air dribble or even a redirect into the net. Dribble training by Verge was a great pack to learn my catches. In this pack, you'll have a lot of chances to learn how to catch the ball from different sides of your car and also how to keep the ball on top of your car. We'll head into some free play drills that I use now. Classic was just aerialing from one side of the field to the other, aiming to hit the crossbar. I would also mix this up by flying upside down like so as well as adding in the cook's twists on each side of my car as well you can tell which is my dominant side as well another drill was helping to learn how to aerial on the side of my car and i found this really changed up my aerial game too for some reason it just didn't click into my brain how i could fly using the side of my car and i can see i haven't practiced it in quite a while too this drill also helps you learn your boost control too and managing your boost by feathering it. The next drill that I also used to do quite a lot was keeping the ball on top of my car. And as you start to develop it, you actually realize you don't need to use boost to keep the ball on top of your car. You can use it simply by tapping on and off of your accelerator. But also as I got better at keeping it on top of my car, I added in boost as well as power slides to work out how to adjust the ball on different sides of my car and to learn the hitbox too. Continuing on from this drill was the bob and weaves. And again, this drill is just keeping the car between you and going underneath it. This is really good to practice your bounce dribbles. The next drill I also had was bouncing the ball up and catching on my car. Again, this was also helpful for learning both my car control as well as ball control and maintaining that speed and momentum going into catching the ball. And another classic that I'm pretty sure all of us have done before is the simple aerial off the walls into an air dribble. Another drill as made popular by Flakes was the power slide cuts. And again, this was really helpful in learning how to dribble the ball with the octane for me. And lastly, we'll go into some workshop maps that also helped me along my way. Let's rings maps were helpful in learning aerial left for me and even just improving my aerial control in general. I found that this was the reason I managed to master, well, almost master aerial left and has helped me start to slowly learn aerial right over the years. Next up, we have the dribble challenge. And again, I found this helped me exponentially with improving my dribbling skills. Though I haven't managed to actually complete it in my time playing this game. Maybe I'll revisit it one day. The parkour map, again, was also helpful in learning my aerial control Control, as well as boost management. Speaking of boost management, Speed Jump Boost by DMC was also a great pack to learn how to manage my boost correctly. This workshop map really helps you focus on how to feather your boost correctly. And I think probably the first map that I ever downloaded was the parkour maps that we saw. And again, this was just to improve my aerial control as a result. So there we have it, my own little guide to improving at Rocket League, as well as sprinkling in some of my own personal experiences on this journey. I know it took quite some time for me to hit Grand Champion, and it was a moment that I'll remember forever. What rank do you find yourself sitting at at the moment? I hope your season 10 is off to a good start so far. And stay tuned for some content about my own start to season 10. Whether you've got thousands of hours or have just picked up the game recently, there are so many things we can do to improve our own gameplay. Leave a like if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe if you're keen for more like this. If you're keen to stick around and watch some more of my content, why not watch this one here or this one here? I'll let you decide. I'm Jack and I'll see you next time. Catch up.